everyone. It's George Crows with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast, and I hope you're doing well. I hope you're okay wherever you are in the world. And I just want to talk a little bit about today. Uh, I have uh, uh, some people that are connected to my life uh, going through the interview process, and what I want to share today is just some ideas uh, that you can get out. Uh, there in your interview no matter what questions that you have and I think there's always this variability of like what the process looks like um, you know what the questions are going to be but what are some of the things that I can come back to over and over again I think that's really important you know in an interview process as someone who has you know um, been on both sides in that room you know doing the interview and also you know being a part of one as a you know someone applying for a job and before I get into um, some of those ideas, before I start discussing, you know, some things that you as an applicant can do, and this is, you know, more for um, not just teachers, but leadership uh, positions as well, because I think the points are actually, um, you know, go through to, to either part. But I also want to kind of just briefly talk about the people that do the interviews, because I think a lot of times when we do this, we actually don't put the candidates in the best position and so I just briefly kind of thought of three things that I used to try to do um, in these spaces uh, in, in, in when we we're interviewing candidates and, and the first one I thought about is like how do you make people comfortable right and I know that we kind of assume that we do that but think about a lot of times when you've had an interview uh, you're maybe like in a room by yourself and then you walk into a room and there's, you know, uh, maybe 10 people. And I've had this situation before. I remember one time in particular, uh, I was in a panel or I was interviewed by 12 people that sat in a table uh, around me and it was just me. And it was like felt, it was just a really uh, uncomfortable feeling. And I had felt like I had anxiety the entire time. And so <laughs> I think really when you're, when people um, enter the the, the room, uh, enter your school, enter, you know, the building where the interview is taking place. Are they feeling welcome as they walked in, right? Are we like reading and are we getting right into the interview? Are we just having conversations? And I think that even just using the term interview right now, as I'm kind of talking about this, it's really thinking about, um, you know, it, we want it to be more conversational than anything. And that's actually leads to the second point is how do we make this conversational? And you, you've probably been in this process of where we have this interview and there's like 12, they have 12 questions ready to go. And it's just, you know, one after another and not necessarily feedback. And one of the, um, one of the best interviews that I had, um, and it was because of, to be honest, you, they set you up for success. And I think when we're doing that, we want to set up every candidate for success, even though, you know, you might be limited, obviously the jobs that you're, you're going to offer. But I actually was uh, greeted very, uh, in a, a very warm manner, but I was given a heads up um, and I was basically given a list of things that I could consider for discussing. I wasn't listed questions and so I was given um, a, a document before. I was like, hey, here's 20 things that we're interested in learning about you and your philosophy on. And so just kind of pick some, they didn't say pick five, pick 10. They said, just pick some that you want to talk about. And I felt that it was a conversation, not an interview, but I could kind of really dig deep and I didn't feel like I was being pressed and was I giving the right answer, but it was just like, you know, getting to know each other, which is something that is really powerful in our interactions that we do every day. And you think about, the the interview process um do we do anything like that in any other part of the school day do we do anything like that or do we have more conversations in the staff room in the hallways you know talking about you know our philosophy of education things that we're trying to do in the classroom and so why i wanted to do that as someone who'd interview is i wanted to kind of get a feel of like you know how do we you know how do we have these conversations when there's like a little bit of a challenge in the conversation you know how do we have this back and forth and what does that look like and I wanted to ensure that I wasn't looking um, for like right answers to questions but I wanted to get to know the person and the more conversational it is um, the more powerful it is through the process 
the other part of this too is uh, many of the times that I was interviewing for candidates, the there would be you know four to six interviews for one position, right? And we'd go through tons of resumes and um, you know uh, we'd reference checks, all of this other things. But there'd only be one person that actually would be able to get the job. And we always look for not the best person for a specific position, but the best person we can find. We knew we could alter uh, positions because that was something that was really important. Um, to, to bring in people that actually didn't think like us, that actually had different experiences, I think that's really important to the work that we do. So knowing that only one person will get the job, my goal is in this process is, yeah, we're trying to find the best person for uh, the position for the school. But we also wanted to make sure that when we went through this process, we actually ensured that every person we had a conversation with, we would help them to become better educators uh, in, the, in that time. Because the goal of education should, that, should be that we continuously do the work to ensure that everyone that works with kids uh, grows and gets better. And so, yeah, they might not get a job at my school or in my district, but they might, they're going to go to some other school and they're going to go to some other place and they work with kids. And I want to make sure that I can do anything that I can to help them grow through the process. And so we wanted to, you know, um, share ideas and share some thoughts during the interview, but when, you know, people would not actually get the position then you make that call. And I think it's very important that not only do you, as a person interviewing make that call yourself you don't want someone that wasn't part of the process making it seems very cold to be honest with you but we wanted to give some feedback and you know give some ideas and some thoughts and some things to think about so that we could actually set them up for success in another place and i think that's really important is that we look at education we we always want to do what's best for kids not best for kids only in one place of you know of the world or in one school so that's something that really thinking about how do we actually think, rethink the way that we're doing this process. And I know like I'm sharing ideas. I know a lot of people do already just some of my experience. And so those three points was like, how do we make it comfortable? You know, people feel welcome when they come in. Um, how do we make it more conversational as opposed to the, the back and forth, you know, super uh, uncomfortable. And I feel sometimes people actually want to do that, which I don't understand at all but really want to make it conversational that we're, we're getting to know, you know, the more than just answers, but how we connect and really how do we actually help every single candidate that we go through this process to actually be better for education, whether they uh, get a job um, in our, in our school or not. And I actually, uh, just to share a story before I get into those five points, I actually remember one specific interview that I had and, uh, I called the person after and told them, hey, like, I'm sorry for you, you didn't get the job, but here's some things I want you to think about. And here's some things that, you know, I hope to tell you. And one of the things that made me really proud was uh, she contacted me after probably about two to three weeks later. And she told me she got a job. And she said that she was so grateful for the way that I had the interview talked to her and gave her some advice and some thoughts to help her through the process. And she said that she was so much better prepared um, for that process. And, and, and thinking about that is that she actually went and advocated for someone who didn't hire for her. She always, I've actually connected with her after and um, have seen her teaching career flourish after the fact. And that was something, it just wasn't, um, she maybe wasn't the right fit. I can't exactly remember but she, she was great. And we wanted to, like, I wanted to make sure that we helped this person to be successful. You don't only want the person to get the job to feel successful through the process. Like we want to make sure that we help, you know, as we go along, but uh, being on the other side, you know, getting the interview, like I said, there's so many variables. You, you don't necessarily know what you're walking into and um, when you're asked questions, right. And there's a lot of like, you know, what about this teaching uh, grade nine science or whatever? You're going to get those curriculum questions. You're going to get, um, you know, specifically targeted to some uh, curriculum aspect. And, and yeah, of course, those are things that we need to consider. But I want you to think about how even when answering those questions, how do you keep coming back to some key topics, right, to make sure 
um, that you're kind of making a point. So I'm gonna talk about five things um, that I think would be beneficial through that process and, and like really what you're going to. And I actually tweeted this years ago, kind of asking people what was beneficial. And I, I shared some of my thoughts, but also connected with some people, what other some people thought as well. And you can see the tweet on the post um, from years ago, what people had shared. And so uh, the first one is that when you share questions, the importance of actually highlighting relationships and how relationships are so crucial to the work that you do, right? So even when you're talking about a curriculum question, when you're talking about a curriculum question, uh, do I know that you're getting to know the kids in front of you? Do I know that they feel welcome and valued through that process? Because it's really hard to teach a curriculum when you actually don't have connection, right? And so not only do we actually have to consider um, the relationships with our students in the classroom, but the relationships with the colleagues, right? Like how do you actually, you know, how, how do you support colleagues? How do you support the growth of others? And always kind of making sure that you come back and that's a theme and that's something that um, we, can, we can get to, right? And I think for me, I know that I can really help people um, think different about the way they teach and help them grow through that process. And I know that there's many teachers I can connect people with that will help them grow through that process. But if I don't think you value relationships, that's a way harder thing to teach. Um, and so a lot of times we get so focused on like the, the science of teaching, but not the, the, the heart of teaching. And I think that's something that you have to keep coming back to those relationships is really crucial in the work that we do. Um, this, this leads to the second one is that when, when you are uh, interviewing you're at a certain point in your career. And of course, we want to hire really great people. But we also want to know that we're not limited to how good they are at that moment in time, that every single one of us actually grows. So do you model and exhibit a willingness to grow and learn and to connect um, and, and to develop yourself through this process? And I think just kind of showing some, some, things that like, hey, this is something that I used to do and here's you know, a way that I've actually um, changed that path or thought differently about this thing. I think in a profession that is so focused on learning, it's imperative that you share that you are a learner. And I think that's really important. So what are some of the things that you've done over time uh, to connect and kind of highlighting those things through your questions like hey here's something I would teach and actually here's something that I used to do and here's how I changed it but I'm always continuously willing to learn and grow and that to me is what I call the sponge factor right will you actually take ideas absorb them and uh, create something with this as well and I think that kind of highlighting that is really important to uh, the work that we do uh, the next one is that you have access to knowledge outside of yourself when you hire people, uh, you don't just hire them, you hire everyone they're connected to. And what I mean by that is, if you look at, like I think of my own work, if you limit it to only the things that I know, that's a very limiting perspective. And I think that one of the things that I really try to do is really connect with others and learn. And I think it's really important that we show we have this willingness to connect within our own uh, organizations, but we also have a willingness to connect outside. And one thing I hear people say all the time is like, hey, we want to like, we want to build a like a world class education, right? But the reality of this is if you want to do that, you have to connect with people outside of the outside of your classroom, you have to connect with the rest of the world. So how do you learn and how do you connect? And I actually remember one, um, a superintendent friend of mine had shared in an interview that, uh, or shared that when he was interviewing for the superintendent position, he was asked a question and he actually uh, tweeted out for help on the question uh, during, it was like kind of like phone a friend, but it was like uh, phone a Twitter. Like it was kind of like that, which was like, that was interesting. And what he had shown uh, through that process. Now, I'm not necessarily um, saying you should do this in an interview. I think there was a relationship there um, with the staff he had worked already in the school division, and he was, you know, applying for the superintendency position. But what he had shown to in the process was, you're not limited to only what I know. You're you actually we have the whole I have the whole world at my fingertips, and I'm willing to actually connect and learn from people to ensure that I can do the best I can for my job, that I'm not limited to only my ideas. 
And, you know, this is something that we think about in education. I know some people have challenged me and said, you know, like, well, people get worried about that, um, that it might make you look like you're, you know, you don't know what you're doing. And I think for me, I appreciate when I, I appreciate when people say, Hey, I don't know the answer, but I can actually figure that out and I can connect with these people and help you out as opposed to someone pretending they know the answer, but not knowing. And I think that to me is how do you actually show that, that willingness to learn um, from others. Uh, the next one is that, that if you're specifically talking about a grade level or a subject area, I want to feel that passion for that, that excitement for this. One of the things that I know, and I know this both as a student and as a teacher, is if people are not passionate about the content they teach, that that actually can totally go into um, our students and they can see that. And I know sometimes um, one of the things that I've really thought about, you know, as someone, as a principal, as an administrator in the past, that we wanted to put people in positions that they're excited about. Too often, you know, in education, we kind of just like give extra classes to people because we're like filling out schedules. But it's not necessarily a good thing for our students that we want to put people in situations where they're excited about the content that they do. And we can be excited about all types of learning. And I understand that. But for me, I want to feel that enthusiasm and excitement that when I'm listening to you talk about or share ideas about what you have to teach that I actually am thinking like, Oh, wow. Like I, the guy would love to be in his class to talk about this right now. A passion is contagious and it's contagious in our kids. And I think it's really, um, it's obvious that when someone's not excited, a teacher's not excited about what they are teaching, then it, it rolls over into the kids, you know, too often. And so the last one is really, is this, uh, is education a job or is it like a calling? And I, I, I really thought about this quite a bit. And as I was sharing this point, and I think that, um, like, if you don't love the, like, if you don't love the job of education with, and there's so many challenges too, it's going to be really hard to be successful. Now, I want to make a really clear distinction here. This doesn't mean that you like eat, sleep, breathe education. I think that's actually, to be honest with you, it's harmful, right? I think it's important that we connect outside of education. For me, uh, you know, I honestly would have a concern with people being at school till 10, 11 at night, because I think it actually, long-term, it does lead to burnout and things like that. But is this something that you truly love? Is this something that you're excited about? Or is this something that, you know, it's just like a job, um, you know, part, you know, part of, uh, the way. And I think, you know, we all have different experiences. Um, we may have like loved and wanted to be a teacher um, and then maybe not been in the best school. And when I say the best school, I'm not talking ever about kids. I'm talking about, you know, maybe the leadership didn't get you excited or um, it's like little things like that. But really, I think it's really important that I can feel that excitement for education, that this is more than just a job. This is something really powerful because if you don't love it, it's going to be really hard to be successful in, in the, in the role because it's so, there's so many demands. It's so tough to do. And like I said earlier, this doesn't mean that you easily breathe education, but you do love it. You see it as, you know, something that's really important. And I think this is at all levels, right? And the, these ideas I think totally apply not only to teaching positions, but leadership positions, right? If you're not excited about working with kids, if you're not excited about working with people, then this is going to be a really tough job. And so those five points really briefly um, is really, how do we focus on relationships? How do we bring that up over and over again? Um, how do you emulate this, this willingness to grow and learn? Um, how do you develop um, access to knowledge outside of, of, of your school community? How do you connect within your community to learn and also outside of your community as well? Um, how do you emulate this passion about the content you teach? And, you know, even I'll adjust that a little bit. How do you, how are you passionate about leadership and developing leaders in your organization if you're applying for an administrative position? And how do you really emulate that this is, this is not just a job, but this is, you know, uh, there's a calling to this, but making sure that we, we, also 
value balance. And I think it's really important that administrators, um, we, if you don't, we want people to be really excited about the job, but I also think it's really important that we encourage balance. We encourage, um, you know, walking away and taking time off and enjoying, you know, uh, outside interests uh, from, from what we do. Because I think that if we don't outright say that, if we don't explicitly say that to people, people think that they, they're expected to, you know, be educate, you know, educators all the time. And I think that when you have those opportunities to do things outside, that actually helps you love education even more. And so just wanted to share those thoughts with you, share some ideas, some tips, because I know people, a lot of people are interviewing, I know a lot of people are applying for jobs for the first time. And a lot of people are setting up interviews. And I just wanted to share some things. Now, obviously, these are just ideas of mine. Uh, you take them for whatever, for whatever that's worth, and hopefully they can help you. But um, if you are applying for a job, um, if you're in this process right now, or you're going to hire at some point, or you're doing this in the future, I just thought um, I would share this to help anyone along the way. So thanks for taking the time to listen. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.